All right, and I think Perfect. Well, welcome everyone. I'm really excited that you're here with us today. My name is Dominique Delbar, and I am the Corporate Event Marketing Manager here at Certiport. And I help organize and market events such as our competitions, which we're going to talk about today, and our Certified Teachers Conference, um, which is a fabulous event. Super fun. It's great to be able to get to know peers there. So I'm really excited, like I said, to be here with you today to talk specifically about the competition. So today we are going to dive into what the competitions are and how they can help your students, um, how they can help you, and how, um, how can help inspire students to become certified. Uh, so today we'll talk about our Adobe Certified Professional and Microsoft Office Specialist U.S. National Championships, as well as the World Championships. So we'll dive into things like how to qualify. I think I have a slide here, actually. Yes, we're going to talk about the background. We're going to talk about qualification. Um, and then we'll talk about the specifics of U.S. National Championship, including where it will be this year. And um, what the prizes are, funding, things like that. Um, we'll talk about the world championship um, and life as a champion a little bit, and then we can have some time for Q&A. So if you have any questions, please pop them in the chat. Hannah's here with us today and she'll help moderate a little bit and we'll get to them afterward. If there's, for any reason, if we're unable to get to the questions, I will also send out my email. I'm happy to talk with you. Uh, and answer any specific questions that you may have. So with that being said, let's talk about the background. So as we go through, I'm gonna be talking about both Microsoft Office Specialist and Adobe Certified Professional. These uh, competitions are held at the same time. So diving first into our MOS Championship. So we have been hosting the Microsoft Office Specialist Championships for 21 years. Um, and we work pretty closely with our team at Microsoft to pull it off. Um, the events are endorsed by, by Microsoft, they're sponsored by Microsoft, um, and they're pretty heavily involved throughout the entire process. Um, and while we host our events here in the U.S., we have partners located all over the globe who are also hosting their national championships. They're finding the best of the best MOS students uh, where they live. Um, I had a webinar I spoke with the partners even just yesterday, and there's a lot of excitement. It's really cool to see how uh, kind of like what we're doing right here in the U.S., people all over the world are doing. Um, so that's great. Um, each year, we not only host the U.S. National Championship, but we also host the World Championship. Um, and it's typically held in the U.S. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, additionally, these championships attract media attention from all over the world. Um, Students are featured on their local news, on national news sometimes, newspapers, articles, um, and it's a really cool experience for students to be recognized and applauded for their, their efforts to really perfect their skills. Um, and something really exciting that's happening in 2023 is a documentary crew, they're based in Australia, will be filming um, a documentary. <laughs> that highlights our Excel students. It's specifically for students who are competing in Excel and it will follow their journey to the world championship. Um, right now, they are in the process of, of casting those Excel students. So um, it's something really exciting to look forward to. Uh, this documentary crew has filmed things for ESPN's 30 for 30, uh, things like that. So I thrilled about it. I recently saw the overview of the, of the documentary and it's going to be called Spreadsheet Champions. And it's really going to focus on the student and what the student's desires are and how the student is actively working to overcome any adversity they may face to become a world championship, a uh, world champion. So really excited about that. Um, if you have questions, please message me. Uh, it's going to be awesome. All right, and diving into Adobe Certified Professional Championships. So we have been hosting um, the Adobe Certified Professional U.S. National and World Championship for the past nine years or so. It's also endorsed by Adobe. We work with them to um, find nonprofits for students to work with and to um, 
make sure that uh, the program or the, the software is available to students, things like that. Um, and similar to Moss, uh, there's competitions being held all over the world uh, to find the best of the best Adobe certified professional students. Just yesterday, I was talking to one of our partners in Malaysia who hosts a massive uh, competition for Adobe. There's around 2,000 students who get involved and they pick the best ones and they send the very best to the world championship the world championship and those are that's who our students are competing against so it's kind of cool and again it attracts media attention from all over the world uh this past year our world champion her name is Sama Sanchez and she had she was interviewed quite a bit by media outlets not only in the U.S. here where she resides but also in the Dominican Republic where she was born uh so it's really cool to see her be recognized and all the opportunities that come after that um and a great thing that I love about the Adobe competitions is that the students and we'll talk about it a little bit later but the students design um a project part of part of the test is the students design a project for a real world client and their nonprofit nonprofit clients. So for example, this past year, students had an opportunity to design a, um, a poster as well as a social media card, I guess you could say, for the nonprofit called Ocean Agency. And they are also based in Australia. I promise we work with people outside of Australia as well. Uh, but they're based in Australia and it is a nonprofit that is dedicated to advertising the uh to inspire the preservation of the coral reefs um and you can learn more about them actually on their documentary or their documentary that is on netflix it's called chasing coral i think so it's really amazing to see what the students design um and for their designs to actually be used in a real world uh way that's a little bit about the adobe competition um so now let's now that you have a little bit of a background of what these are, let's talk about how your students can qualify. Because it's one thing to have these competitions, but it's another thing for your students to actively be able to participate in them. Um, and participating is, it's feasible. It's possible for your students to easily get involved. Um, so in order to qualify for the Microsoft Office Specialist Championships, there's a couple of things that need to be met though. Students must be between the ages of 13 and 22 years old. So that's about middle school to, graduating college, about a senior in college. And we have students all over the board. Sometimes a student from middle school will be everyone out and they will take, take home the, the national title, sometimes even the world championship title. Um, so it's, it, it, as long as they're between 13 and 22, uh, they, can, they can qualify. Um, and they need to pass one of the qualification exams. So the qualification exams for 2023 are um, MOSS Word, or so Word 2016, Excel 2016, um, PowerPoint 2016, and um, Word 2019 or 365 apps, um, Excel 2019 or 365 apps, or PowerPoint 2019 or 365 apps. Um, if you're right now, if you only have access to 365 apps, I know that we're slowly rolling out with that. Uh, your students can still qualify and they'll just test with the Excel or they'll just test with the 2019 students. The exams are very comparable. The software is very comparable. Um, so we feel like it's a pretty uh, level playing field for that, but um, that's in circumstances where it applies. I know that we're still rolling out and probably most of you are on 2019 and 2016. But if you have any questions about that, email me, I'm happy to talk. So, um, and, and so that's, the first step to qualify. Uh, so that's what students need in order to submit their exam to participate in the competition for US nationals. Um, and in order to receive an invitation, though, it's very competitive. So um, after students complete their exam, they submit their scores, we're excited, they become certified. I think that's a great moment to celebrate your students anyways. Um, but after that, they uh, if they submitted their scores to the competition, um, we then rank them based off of how fast they complete the exam and how accurate they are. So, um, and depending on where they rank, uh, we will post or 
So depending on where they fall, if they rank in first place for their state, um, by the end of the qualification period, they will receive an invitation to compete at um, the US National, uh, US National Championship. Um, so if that makes sense. So it, it's very competitive. Um, we update the rankings on a weekly basis because of course students test on an ongoing basis generally. Um, and sometimes your student might be bumped out by someone else in the state who took the same exam. Um, but if that's the case, I, I just recommend checking the, the rankings frequently and your students can always retest to regain their position if they're interested in participating in the competition. Um, to learn more about this or to see the current rankings, you can go to the us.moschampionship.com slash about page. If you scroll down to the bottom, you will see, uh, it'll say spring qualifier rankings and you can scroll to your state and then you'll be able to see all the rankings from there. Uh, when you're looking at the rankings, you will only be able to see the school name. Um, and that's, that's due to privacy. We can't be uh, sharing the personal information of students. We're very protective over that. But if you see your school name, definitely check your grades, see which student you think it could be. Um, and let them know. Um, or you can also always email me too if you have any questions. If you see like, oh, like I have uh, Connor and Sydney both have um, a score of 980 and I can see that we're ranked in first place, but I don't know who it is. Email me and I, I can help you with that. I can pull the reports needed to see which student had the slightly faster time. So, and hopefully that makes sense. Again, I'm happy to talk about that too if you guys have any questions. Um, and for Adobe to qualify, it is kind of similar, except um, <laughs> it's similar but different. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, again, students need to be between the ages of 13 and 22 years old, and they need to receive a passing score, so a score of 700 on Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, or InDesign. So those are the exams that we're looking at. And then they need to submit the original project, and sorry, excuse me, they then need to submit an original project as well as its source files to the competition. And I can send out that, that link in um, the chat after this or in an email, a follow-up email so you can see. Um, and those are the, the two major steps. So once they submit that project, it's basically saying, hey, I'm interested in participating, please count me in. Um, and then what happens is at the end of the qualification period, um, all of the projects will be reviewed by a panel of graphic design judges. And they will review not only just the overall image of the, 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 the student submits, but also the source files. What did they do to create this image? Um, and then from there, they will select the top students and then those students will receive an invitation to compete at the US National Championship. Um, Yes, um, it's uh, it can be pretty competitive and it can be also, I understand too, that it can be difficult to help your students know what to submit, right? We don't give a very specific prompt. We really want things to be somewhat open-ended, but based on my experience, I would love to put you, give you a little secret of what our judges look for. Um, they want the projects to be somewhat professional. Think your infographics, think of, uh, posters, um, invitations, things like that, that really show off the student's skills. And they really want to know, like, do they understand maybe what crop marks are? Um, how's the resolution of these images? Um, what skills are they uh, using in order to create special effects? Um, these are things that they look for. Uh, they have a great eye for. So if you have any questions about that, email me, um, but hopefully that provides a little bit more guidance for your students as they're looking to submit their projects. Um, the thing that I love about it is if you are already teaching um, graphic design courses in your class and there's this big final project that you want your students to do, it's really easy to then just have them submit their files right after the project. Um, and then they can, they'll be put in to, uh, uh, to be reviewed by our judges. Um, it's, it really takes about maybe two minutes for your students to submit, um, but then it can have huge payoffs. Um, last year, our U.S. national champion, uh, Avery Blanchard, who's, <laughs> ironically, she's right here. Um, she just decided, okay, I'm going to just try it. I'm going to just take a couple of minutes, submit something that I've already created and see what happens. And then she went on to win the U.S. national championship. Um, 
she's brilliant. And it's totally feasible for your students as well. So take those couple of seconds and uh, it can have a huge payoff. Um, and I briefly mentioned this, I keep talking about qualification periods. Um, and these are the periods in which students receive invitations to the competition. So uh, for Microsoft Office specialists, um, in order to receive an invitation, they have to be ranked in first place in their specific exam um, by the end of the qualification period for their state. A lot of qualifiers there, I know. Um, so for this qualifier, right now we're in the spring qualifier. It started December 17th and it goes through May 12th. If your student wants to earn an invitation to the U.S. National Championship, they need to be ranked in first place in their state, in their exam, by the end of, it's like by midnight on May 12th. Um, so they still have time if they're interested in gaining that first place position uh, to earn that invite. For Adobe Certified Professional, your students need to submit a project during each of the qualifiers. Um, so right now it's not for each of them, sorry, during the qualification period. Uh, so right now for the spring qualifier, if they submit a project today, then their project will be re reviewed at the end of the qualifier to earn the spring qualifier invitation. Um, so it's something just to keep in mind. Um, that's the way it works is we just have it broken out like that. Um, if you have any questions, again, please email me. Um, and these qualifier dates are posted on the websites for the U.S. National Championships as well. All right. And so let's say it's the end of the qualifier and your students have qualified. Um, congratulations. It's huge. It's very competitive. Um, and it's, it can be, I mean, it's of course exhilarating, but then it's important to know what the next steps are. And what does that invitation include? Well, it includes a complimentary pass for your student to attend the US National Championship. And that includes access to catered meals, to student parties. This year, um, they're planning a really fun beach themed party. I, I just saw a preview of the DJ, so I'm really excited about it. Um, it also includes giveaways. Um, and access to uh, the student keynote speakers and access to the student lounge as well. So uh, it's completely complimentary for the student. And if the student is under 18 years old, they are required to bring a chaperone. Um, and the first chaperone is totally free. And that chaperone receives, again, access to catered meals, um, activities, things like that. If your student um, qualifies and wants to bring more than one chaperone, um, there is an additional cost. I think it's $250 for each additional chaperone, but it, it covers their conference pass pretty much. Um, so that's what's included for those qualifiers. Um, if your student qualifies for the U.S. National Championship, they are responsible for their own costs to and from the U.S. National Championship as well as lodging. Um, and I know that this can be quite an expense for many students. So we are actively trying, we, we want to support students and give them options. So there's a few things. One, if your school typically helps fund travel for students for conferences like this, definitely take advantage of that. That's a big one. And I know quite a few schools do do that. Um, another one is we have started, we launched just this year, um, a travel scholarship for students. And this is a needs based scholarship. And both students from Microsoft Office Specialists and Adobe can qualify uh, or can apply for these scholarships. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, if your student receives a travel scholarship, it covers the cost of their airfare as well as, uh, as, well as their hotel um, up to $1,000. So that's really exciting. If your student does qualify for that, I will be sending information directly to them. I just send it directly to those qualifiers to be able to apply. Um, to apply, we need a personal statement from the student and from the teacher. So if that's you, um, that your student will probably be reaching out to help to get some help with that. Um, but in addition to that, I have put together several other ideas for students who qualify to find funding. Um, things like fundraisers or GoFundMe. Um, in fact, on the note with GoFundMe, I know of several people who have reached out to me asking how they can support students, um, and I have been directing them to GoFundMe um, for, to find students who are uh, qualified and who need the extra support. 
Um, so those, the funding pages, if you're interested in the other, the list of ideas, it's definitely not exhaustive, but if you're interested in those ideas, definitely visit our websites. I have it listed both on the Microsoft, um, the Moss U.S. National uh, page, as well as the Adobe U.S. National page. So please check that out. Um, and I hope that it is helpful. And if there's any ideas that you have too, that you'd like to bounce off of me or you feel would be beneficial for your fellow educators to know, um, send me an email and let's talk. And I'm happy to add that to the list. I think it's really important to be able to collaborate to support students. So. Um, and something exciting that happens at the same time as, US, as the U.S. National Championship is our Certified Educator Conference. Um, and certified, if you've received emails, you might be an expert at this point, um, or if you've attended in the past, love to hear about your experience in the chat. Um, but Certified is a conference that's dedicated to educators um, who... Uh, certify their students. And it's an opportunity for uh, teachers to teach other teachers. And so you come there, you can collaborate with others who teach the same thing as you. You can get ideas, um, get some worksheets maybe, or um, brainstorm on how you can help solve maybe common issues in the classroom. It really is an awesome experience for teachers to come together to network and to be able to support each other as they seek to inspire students. Um, if you have a student who qualifies for the championship and you are their sole chaperone, you will receive a free pass to certified. And that would include, again, access to all the catered meals, to the networking events, to the uh, party, which for the teachers this year, there's going to be a luau. Maybe there's gonna be fire throwing. I don't know if we can get it approved by the hotel, but my fingers are crossed. Um, and uh, it, it just provides an awesome opportunity to network with your fellow educators. So um, if you have questions about that, email me. Um, but again, if you have a student who qualifies um, and you're, you're their chaperone, you will get a complimentary pass to certify this year. Um, and now we're gonna kind of dive into the specifics of the US National Championship. Uh, what it's going to look like this year, what your students could expect. So I'm gonna skip this video. Hopefully it'll let me, okay, perfect. So, and I'll send you a sneak peek of our new video this next, for this, this next year after this call. Um, but this year, our US National Championship is going to be held in Orlando, Florida at the Hilton Buena Vista Hotel. It's, it's near Disney Springs. Um, and the dates are June 16th through the 28th. Um, and if your students qualify and they're participating in MOSS, what your students should expect is a 50 minute exam during the student testing experience. They should expect a 50 minute exam. And this exam is not like your certification exams that they're taking to or in the cert, it is very much project-based. They will be given um, some information and they will need to recreate a document. Um, and it's, I, I got a preview of it a couple of weeks ago and it's hard, <laughs> it's really hard, but it's amazing what students can do. They're smart and they're totally capable of doing it. Um, the the project-based test really, the goal is to test the student's expertise in the software. And they are then graded on their speed as well as their accuracy. Um, and the top three will then place at the U.S. National Championship. For Adobe, the Adobe students, and I think I alluded to it a little bit because I get excited, <laughs> but the Adobe students, uh, they're tested differently than Moss. Um, they are given eight hours to create a project for a nonprofit client. Um, and the nonprofit client will come, they will describe their business, they'll describe what the needs of the, the, of the prompt is, why, why they're getting the prompt in the first place. And then they'll be given a couple of files uh, to help them get started. And they will be sent off. They will get to design for eight hours. We give all students um, Wacom tablets to help them design and those students can take them afterward to help them as they design at home. Um, but then uh, to prepare for this, uh, I mean, of course, they're gonna be tested in how well they understand the software. But to be successful, they need to really understand that they're designing for a business. And I think it can be really easy to show off your creative skills, especially your illustrating skills sometimes, which 
are always amazing, but it's important to remember that they are designing for business, for business purposes. So as long as it fits for the business, it works. They should also really understand how to use a project brief, uh, some graphic design vocab vocabulary, and they should seek to meet the client's requirements. Um, after the eight hours is done, <laughs> they'll be brain dead, they'll be exhausted, and then our judges will come in. And it's a panel of judges of professional graphic designers. We have people from Adobe come in. Um, as well as the client themselves go through and judge which projects they feel best met the project uh, the the project brief. Um, and then the top three uh, students will be announced at our awards ceremony. Uh, this year we are actively working on the nonprofit client. So once we have all of the thumbs up, please keep an ear out for the announcement. Really excited about it for this year. Um, but when the students are not testing, because let's be honest, <laughs> they're not testing the entire time, uh, we like to have fun. We like to make sure that they are able to network with other students who are passionate about the same things as them and to have a memorable time and to really celebrate their accomplishments. Um, so um, when they're not testing, <laughs> when they check in, they, they get gift bags, uh, just some goodies and some items for them to take home and to commemorate the event. They have access to the student lounge and this historically the student lounge is really the place to be. If I wasn't running around <laughs> during the event, I would want to be hanging out in there. There's arcade games, there's snacks, there's drawing, there's uh, Xboxes, Playstations, um, just a ton of fun things for the students to come together to, to play, to laugh, to make memories and to make lifelong friends. Um, they can also expect a luau party. There, it'll be a beach party with a DJ. Again, I saw the preview of the DJ today and she looks really fun. Um, as soon as I saw her, I thought, man, if I had a portion of that energy, I my house would be constantly clean and I'd probably speak five languages and <laughs> I'd be so on top of things. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. They'll also get a chance to explore Disney Springs. We'll give them a gift card. Uh, and their chaperones gift cards to to go out, get food, and relax um, at Disney Springs. Um, and they also get to compete against other top students from around the U.S., um, which is part of the testing experience. But it, I think there's something really special when you get to come together with others who are passionate about the same thing that you are, and they have similar goals. It's I think it's very validating. It's very inspiring. Uh, it helps you support each other. Um, and you would think too that there'd be this feeling of contention at the competition, uh, but there really wasn't. There really isn't. It's really exciting to see how students just support each other and they're thrilled for each other and they cheer each other on. Uh, so I love that. They will also get to learn from renowned keynote speaker, Spencer West. Oh, hopefully I'm not lagging. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Hannah, can, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you great. Perfect. Okay, excellent. Uh, I noticed a little bit of a lag here, but uh, if you guys can hear me, that's excellent. Um, Spencer West is going to be our closing keynote speaker, and he's amazing. Um, if you if your students want to look him up on TikTok, he has millions and millions of followers, um, and he um, he's great. So I, I recommend you look him up on YouTube so you can kind of get a, a little preview of who he is. And then they'll also get to attend the 2023 U.S. National Championship Awards Ceremonies. Um, I believe my next slide will go into the prizes a little bit. But during the award ceremony, it's just a great opportunity for students to be highlighted and to be recognized for uh, their hard work and their achievement. Just earning an invitation to this really is quite a big deal. And then we announce the winners. And along with that, the winners... Uh, get some of their prizes, which is exciting. So we'll talk about Moss, then we'll go into Adobe. Um, for So all the students, they receive a scholarship. Um, so for first place, they get a $3,000 scholarship, second place, $2,000, and third place, $1,000. Um, this is up. Uh, I was we, uh, we bumped it up this year, which I'm excited about, and I think the students deserve it. Um, if the student gets first place for Moss, they get a medal as well. You can see the student with his medal. They get a certificate, a trophy, a gift from Microsoft. Um, because Microsoft sponsors the event, they typically provide prizes. Historically, they've been things like um, surfaces, 
uh, like the laptops and the tablets, uh, Xboxes, headphones, things like that. Um, and the first place winner also receives an all expenses paid trip to compete at the world championship and to represent the US. Um, it's quite an honor uh, and it's, it, they deserve it. So, and second place and third place, they also get medals of achievement. Um, they get gifts from Microsoft and they get winner certificates. So. For Adobe, um, the, the scholarship prizes are the same, 3,000 for first place, 2,000 for second place, and 1,000 for third place. Um, and they get medals, they get winner certificates, but each of the top, each of the students for the top three for Adobe receive an all expenses paid trip to represent the US at the world championship. Um, and again, that's for each of the top three students for Adobe. Um, and they come together and they, they represent the United States. Um, oh, and this slide is just talking about that too. And so the all, exp all expenses paid trip, it includes, it's not just for the student, I failed to mention that. So the student's airfare and hotel is paid for, but also, um, Airfare and hotel is paid for for their chaperones as well. So whoever their chaperone is for that event. Um, and they'll come and they'll represent the US. Again, if they want to bring an additional chaperone, the additional chaperone, they'll, they'll have to cover their costs, but that is also an option. So um, then that leads us to the world championship where students from all over the world are coming together to compete, to represent their countries. Um, like I mentioned before, while we're holding these things in the US, it's really exciting, uh, but the excitement isn't just here, it's happening all over the world. And it's really exciting to listen to our global partners uh, be just as passionate about getting their students to the world championship. Um, so, uh, it's really a phenomenal opportunity for your students to be able to meet others from ar around the globe. If your students are competing in Moss and they make it to the world championship, we throw a big party. <laughs> We're super excited for them. Their testing experience is different than the U.S. national championship. And this year, it's actually different than it ever has been. It's longer. Um, there's going to be about a two-hour exam. And this exam is going to include a technical portion where it's really allowing the student to demonstrate their technical skills within the software. But then there's also a real world application portion where they're given a prompt from a real world client and they will be asked to create a document of some sort for that client. This past year, our students um, created a project for the nonprofit NPower. Um, and, and power is dedicated to helping um, low income or uh, veterans, uh, minorities uh, be able to um, have access to education, which is pretty cool. Um, but our students uh, created documents for them. They analyzed some data or they're given data to them, depends on their program. And they created documents for NPower to use. So it's pretty cool. It's very intense. It's very intense. Um, but the feedback that I got from students last year is while it's really intense, it really is a cool opportunity for them to demonstrate their skills. For Adobe, the testing is similar to US Nationals at the World Championship. Again, they'll be given eight hours to create a project for a nonprofit client. And this nonprofit client will be different than the US National Championship client. And again, they need to ensure that they really understand how a project brief works, graphic design vocabulary, and they really need to understand that they're meeting the client's requirements. I think it's really easy for us to know what we want to create sometimes, um, but it's really, they need to really understand that they need to get into the client's head and understand what the client's needs are and meet those. Um, last year, um, as I was walking around the, the lab, there were, I mean, Students really need to understand, I'm gonna just <laughs> emphasize this, students really need to understand graphic design vocabulary. Really, really understand that. And if they do, they'll be a lot more successful. So. But again, when students are not testing because uh, the testing, it can be stressful, we wanna celebrate that. We want them to have fun. We want them to network. We want them to have use this opportunity to grow, regardless if they win or not. 
Um, and so we provide a lot of opportunities for them to relax, to have fun, but also to network. So they will, again, they'll get uh, gift bags um, <clears throat> with different goodies in them. Um, from what I've seen this pack for, for 2023, I think there's some really nice headphones in there, some notebooks, um, other various things. Um, they'll also have a student party, which will be really fun. There'll be DJs, a DJ, there's gonna be lots of food. Um, students will also, students and their chaperones will also get to spend the day at Disney World. It's included in uh, the conference. Um, so they'll get to go hang out there. We'll give you a gift card so you can eat, you can have fun, relax, um, make some lasting memories, make some friends. Um, and then they'll also get to learn from renowned keynote speakers this next year. I don't know if it's, I, I know the contract is is underway. So actually I'll, I'll keep it, I'll keep my um, lips sealed, but the keynote speaker is phenomenal. Um, really looking forward to learning from her. And then of course they'll get to attend the awards ceremony where there are even bigger prizes uh, to be won. Um, for the MOS students, they, if they place in first place, they will get $8,000, second place $4,000, and third place $2,000. They will each get prizes from Microsoft. First place typically gets a big prize, like a, a computer of sorts. Second place got, last year they got an Xbox. Third place got some very, very nice headphones. They'll get winner certificates um, and, and medals, so. And then for Adobe, uh, our Adobe students uh, receive $8,000, $4,000, $2,000, $8,000 for first place. Um, a gold medal for the first place winner, a certificate, a trophy. I mean, you can see here too a little bit, <laughs> the, the checks that the students get, they're massive. They're huge. Um, and it's amazing for both after US Nationals and the World Championships to hear the feedback um, that the students get as they're leaving. And there have been quite a few circumstances where um, a student will be walking around with their massive check at the airport and people will stop and ask them, hey, why do you have this check that's bigger than you? And it gives the students an opportunity to describe what happened. And there have been quite a few circumstances where students are actually offered jobs um, because people are so impressed with the skills that they, that they have and that they're able to demonstrate. So it's pretty incredible. Um, there's a lot of success stories actually that have come from the, the championships. And it's not just for the students who take first place, right? For so many of these students, it's a great opportunity to network, um, to meet new people. Um, there's a student who, uh, I don't think she was in the top three at all, but she was able to meet some representatives from Microsoft and she actually ended up getting a job there and she still works there today. Her name is Ashley. Um, or the student right here, I think he got first place in PowerPoint maybe in 2016 and he went on to go to MIT. You know, he works at a cool startup um, in Boston. Um, and there's so many more amazing success stories that come out of this. Um, the competitions really work wonders for students. It helps them feel it really helps instill this confidence in them that they can do amazing things, that they have done amazing things, um, and that they're smart. <laughs> I think that's a big thing. It's reminding them they're really smart and that they can achieve their goals. Um, if you're interested in learning more about life as a champion, we have hosted several Ask a Champion webinars that are both for teachers and students to get to know our past champions, and we're looking to host more. Um, uh, this semester. So keep an eye out for those if you're interested. We host them for both Microsoft and Adobe. So you can learn more about past competitors so your students can see that it's possible for them to, they can be inspired. Um, I think this next slide is for Adobe too. Yes. Um, uh, one of my favorite things that I've heard too from past competitors for Adobe is how a lot of them are so passionate about art, but then sometimes they feel like I can't make a career out of this. And the competitions are amazing for them because it reminds them that, no, I can make a career out of this. My skills are valued. My skills are needed. Um, and it helps propel them into their future as amazing designers. I mean, um, Jenny Mohees, uh, who's an educator in Florida, said something amazing that I think about all the time. And it's, there's nothing that we interact with 
that a designer did not make. Um, and I, I love that. And I think that our students are reminded that, of that at the competition. So it is phenomenal. I love them. <laughs> um, and again, I talked about the Ask a Champion webinars. If you're interested in getting involved, please get involved. Um, another thing that you can keep an eye out for that we have put together are competition in a box. I don't have a slide for this, but I'll, I'll talk about it. Our uh, competition in a box um, program kits, if you will. And so if you're interested in getting started with the competitions, implementing them in your classroom, this is for you. Uh, the competition in a box kits come with some instructions if, you, if you're interested in uh, having a classroom competition within your own classroom that leads to the US National Championship. It, it has instructions on how you can do so. It provides information about the competitions. It's not as in-depth as what we talked about today, but it provides some, um, as well as sample certificates that you can give to your students who rank for second and third place, um, stickers for your students. Um, lapel pins, things like that. Um, and it's great, we have them for both Adobe and Microsoft. So keep an eye out for an email so you can request those. They're free of charge, it's for you to be able to uh, help get your students excited about certification and help them see themselves as a champion. Um, so keep an eye out, email me if you have any questions. Um, and I know we have about uh, 18 minutes left if there's any questions in the chat. Let me stop sharing. Yes, we did have quite a few. So I will just start from the top and we'll work our way down. And again, yeah. if you have any other questions as we go through this, um, feel free to drop those in and we'll make sure to cover those as well. Uh, first question that came through is for the MOSS competition. How long before you phase out the 2016 version? That is a good question. So 2023, this year is the last year that we're, we'll have 2016. Moving Perfect. forward, it'll be um 2019 and 365 and then eventually probably likely 365 but that's not for several years now okay awesome um and then another question that came through is about the level of the MOS exam at the competition is it the associate exam is it more like the expert exam what should students expect Yes, um, that is a really good question and really I mean I some I often say to for students to prepare for the competition, to use that expert level exam to really help them master their skills. It is a lot harder than the associate level mm -hmm. exam. Um, and really what your students should seek to master is, I mean, of course they should take advantage of the learning curriculum, both for expert level and the associate level, but also spend a lot of time playing around in the programs themselves, mm -hmm. because that's what the test is. It, they're in the program, they're designing project in the program. And so they really need to understand where tools are, um, how to use the ribbon, um, things like that. Hope that helps. Awesome. Yes, that's super helpful. Um, another question, would it be possible to have Certiport post the winning past Adobe entries so that our students can look at those before they submit their projects? Yes, yes. And you read my mind. That's something that I'm actively working on. So I'm working on compiling those um, so you can have access to see them. Um, and where and will those be posted, Dom? Those will be posted on um, on the U.S. National Championship website for those for U.S. Nationals. And I can also post them for the World Championship so you can see things that are made on the global stage. Fabulous. Um, you can also look at, if you're interested just in this past year, I think on our blog, as well as on the website, you can see just little excerpts of um, the students' projects that they created for the winners this past year. Awesome. So in thinking about student invitations, one teacher asked, when will students be notified um, my student applied for a travel scholarship. So from one of our fall qualifier winners. Yes, yes, that's a great question. So the travel scholarships are still being under, are under review still, um, and that they'll be notified hopefully in the next week or so uh, if they received it or not. That is a really good question. Okay, next question. For the Adobe competition, is it one student from each state or one from Illustrator, one from Photoshop, and one from InDesign? That is a good question. And it, as of right now, it's not one per state or one per program. We really look at the quality of each submission. Um, and a, a lot of it depends too on the total number of seats we have available. It's very competitive. I believe this year there'll be around 40 students. So awesome. that's a great question. Yeah. Uh, 
next question for the Moss Championship. If they go, do they need to know Word, PowerPoint, and Excel, or just one, just two? How do we yes. prepare them? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so whatever program your student qualified in, let's say they qualified with PowerPoint, they will only be tested in PowerPoint. Um, they won't be expected to then do a VLOOKUP in Excel. They will just, mm -hmm. will just stick to the program um, that they originally qualified in. If your student for any reason qualifies with multiple um, exams, which it happens, um, they will have to select one to compete in. And if for any reason, if your student has competed in the past, let's say they competed in Excel um, and they qualified again this year in Word, that's fine. But if they qualified in, again this year in Excel, they cannot compete, if that makes sense. So you can only compete in a program once. Awesome. Um, so this is another question as it relates, I think, to both U.S. Nationals and the World Championship. Is there a dress code for the competition? Is there a dress code? That's a really good question. Um, and we try to send out um, like a packing list, but I think for the like the parties and things like that, going to Disneyland or um, going down to downtown Disney, it's definitely casual. Um, when competing, um, I mean, students can wear whatever they feel, uh, something that they're comfortable in. Um, some do do a little business casual. At the world championship level, sometimes students will have matching outfits depending on the country that they're representing. Um, so that's a little bit loose too. But what I do recommend is at the, at the award ceremony, whether it be for, I mean, U.S. National or the, world, or the world championship, they should be there in business casual clothing, especially as their photos are going to be taken um, with executives from Microsoft, from Adobe, from Pearson, even, um, sort of port, um, and there's interviews, things like that. So I do recommend business catching for that. So hopefully that helps. Yes, that is helpful. Um, so we have a couple participants who are here from countries outside the United States. Oh, great. Um, one question that came through, if a student qualifies for the world championship from a country outside of the United States and they are under 18, they require a chaperone. Will that chaperone be funded similar to U.S. students? That is a fabulous question. And because, so in the U.S., Certiport really runs the U.S. national championship but our global partners are running those national competitions wherever they are. And so the short answer is that very much varies. Um, what I recommend is I'll, after this call, I'll please email me and I can get you in touch with um, your representative for whatever country you would like to represent. And they'll be able to give you more specific information depending on what their needs are. Based off of what I've seen, is that the students who qualify who are under 18, they, I mean, they always have chaperones with them. Sometimes they are their parents. Um, sometimes they're the teacher. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they are the um, representatives from the, the company from our partner. So it, it varies. So email me and I can get you in touch with uh, the right person and we can, we can go from there. Awesome. Um, so going back to the Microsoft competition, what practice exam would you su suggest specifically for Moss Excel? And where do I find those and get access to those? Yes, yes, definitely. If you have access to CERT prep, I definitely recommend starting there. Um, really helping the students master the content there. Um, I think that's a phenomenal place to start. Hannah, in your experience, do you have anything to add to that? Hannah is also a <laughs> expert, and she might have some No, I, I feel like I've been out of that world for a little while, but <laughs> yes, I was just going to drop in and say that we just had, for those who aren't familiar with CERT prep, we just had a webinar earlier this week talking a little bit more about that and how teachers are using it. So if that's something that you're not familiar with, We'll be sending out, of course, the, the link to the recording for this session. So if you wanted some follow-up information about any of the exams or any of the details that we've covered, including for CERT prep, please feel free to just respond to that email and we'll make sure to get you in touch with your CERT report representative to get some more information about that. Um, another question that came through is, can we post the website for the certification test for Adobe? So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop that link into the chat so everyone can see that. So you'll see that we have um, some exams outside of the competition as well. So we have um, 
Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign that are part of the competition. We also have certification exams that cover After Effects, Dreamweaver, so web development, video as Premier well with Premiere Pro. So not all of the exams are qualifying exams for the competition, but that should give you all the information that you need um, about those as well. Let me see if we have any more. Um, if a student wins in the US, can they go on to participate in the world? How many students go on to participate at the world championship from the US competition? From the US. I touched on this, but just to clarify. Yes, yes. And that's a great question. So if they win first place at the US national championship, they get to go on to the world championship, like we talked about. And because they're for well, I'll talk about Microsoft first, because there are six exam tracks, there's six possible first place winners. And so we invite six MOS students from the US to come participate at the world championship. So one for each program within each version, if that makes sense. For Adobe, there are just three from the US who are invited to represent, and that's the first, second, and third place students. Awesome. So the, what is that? Nine so we'll have students? nine, nine US students total. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. If there's, I think we're shooting for probably around, uh, there's going to be quite a few students from all over the world there too. So um, typically what we do is because they're, they're representing the US, we have Team USA shirts and uh, flags for them to, to represent the country awesome. at the world championship. It's very sweet. Uh, so last question, I think that's come through. I think we've covered pretty much anything, everything else, but uh, just to clarify, will certification still be available for MOS 2016, but just not eligible, eligible for the competition after 2023? That is a great question. Um, and I will have to um, shoot me your, uh, give me your, your contact information and I, I will connect you with um, a representative who will be able to give you those exact dates for each thing. Uh, for each for each exam, things like that. And I'll just pull into, I'm going to find it from our website. So if you go to the educator resources section of certiport.com, and now of course it's taking a second to load, um, we post all of the exam retirement information there. So you'll have plenty of notice for when those types of things are going to be happening. It's not going to be something that we announce and then retire within just a couple of weeks. So no, no. Um, if you go to our website under the educator resources section, we post objective domains and all of the exam retirement information as well. Yes. So I think that pretty much covers it. Dominique, anything else that you wanted to share before we wrap up? Um, nothing uh, specifically to the competition, but I do want to thank you for your time for being here and thank you for what you do for students. I know that teaching can sometimes be a thankless job, but it is amazing at these competitions to see your efforts make a huge difference in these students' lives. It helps push them into their futures. And I, I'm grateful that you're here. I'm grateful for what you do. Uh, so thank you. And again, my inbox is open. Please send me messages if you have any questions. Wonderful. And thank you so much for the wonderful questions and comments that we've yes. gotten. Like Dominique said, we're always happy to get your feedback, to answer any questions. So feel free to reach out to us and we will be in touch soon. Thanks everyone. Have a great rest of your yeah. evening.